starting to grasp it. But that's one of the core principles of Stoicism, right? Like, yeah. It, although it's it's as a core principle, it's more of like a slogan than mm, anything okay. else, right? So yep. you, you really have to do a lot of unpacking, yeah, of it because there's many interpretations, what, right? There's many different avenues yeah. you could go down. And and it's interesting in the history of Stoicism that idea went through a kind of transformation and and uh, getting more and more complicated as it went. Mm. So Zeno has this idea of in accordance with nature, which is not radically new. I mean, the Aristotelians, mm. the Platonists had that idea, the Epicureans, they just have different conceptions of nature. Mm. And then Zeno talks about, you know, like being in accordance with nature, or living in accordance with nature. And his his immediate successors, um, Cleanthes and, and Chrysippus, they expand on the concept. And so, mm. you know, Cleanthes, according to the people that we, we have that talk about them, because we don't have any of their original writings, mm. um, Cleanthes thought it meant like living in accordance with the universe as such. So like, mm. you know, if I cross the street and... Uh, a car drives and hits the puddle and the puddle splashes on me. I shouldn't get all ticked off because mm -hmm. it's just physical laws. You know, mm. um, I shouldn't expect my, my body to live forever because that's not the, the nature of body. So, so there's that part. And then Chrysippus said, well, it's also distinctively human nature. Mm. We, we're not the same kind of beings as, you know, say a piece of technology or uh, a non-rational animal. We're not gods, of course, um, mm. whatever the gods happen to be for Stoicism. That's kind of a murky topic. Uh, mm -hmm. The place to go for that is, is Cicero's on the nature of the gods. But, um, you know, there there is a distinctively human nature that most of us, myself included, don't fully realize. And so, you know, we know that it includes certain things like rationality or the capacity to develop the virtues or... Mm. Uh, Aristotle pointed this out, logos, the, the capacity to communicate with each other about moral values, being able to recognize moral values that go beyond just pleasure and pain, things like the just and the unjust or the noble and the, the, mm. the foul or, or base. Um, all of that is, is part of who we are, and we, we get it by being the kind of creatures that we are. You might say it's in our DNA if we want to talk in mm. contemporary terms, but it's also in the social framework that we're in of, of culture mm. and it it's not something that's like an on off switch it's not like you turn 12 and suddenly you're rational mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah it's something that has to be be developed over time and we mm. see that there's... it's a practice like they teach us you know the stoics really yeah. put an emphasis on that right like you you practice rationality and yeah and, and you might think about it as you use the bit of rationality that you've got yeah to increase the amount of rationality that you've got because most of the time you're probably irrational mm. you know, like everybody yep. else around you and the same thing with freedom right you use the little bit mm. of the sliver of freedom that you have to be a little bit more free by changing your habits and changing your incorrect viewpoints on things but you're, you're not like totally free all the time to do anything yeah. whatsoever you're still you're still this this bundle of habits and impressions and and reasoning processes many of which you're not even aware of much of the time until you mm. analyze them so to, to to live in accordance with nature is something kind of complicated um some people in, in modern stoicism have said well it just means living rationally but then you got to be able to say well what's living rationally right mm. yeah. um the ancient Stoics said that you could you could understand it as living in accordance with the virtues, but that too you have to um, you know to, to truly understand what wisdom is, or temperance. There's got to be some practice going on. So mm. there's you know there's a lot to the concept. So much that I'm actually working on a on a short book on on it because the Stoics say so many things about it, mm. and and some of the things that they say I think we probably want to reject like like so musonius rufus epictetus's teacher thinks that being a farmer as a profession is mm -hmm. more in accordance with nature than any of the other professions yeah i don't i don't know about that yeah <laughs> you know? well it kind of goes down um, the line of saying like well a stoic is this and a stoic is that as opposed yeah. to uh, a stoic can be whatever as long as he uses or he or she uses these principles to kind of to kind of think and 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 live by right yeah, I mean, there's there's some things that are based in, you could say, in the, the kinds of bodies that we have. 
Mm. And Stoics are materialists, so they they think that we are, in fact, our bodies. They they talk in terms of the soul, but the soul is something that's that's essentially coming out of the body, and we could say the mind if if you want. Mm. Um, which, which they, you know, I don't think they'd have a problem. They, they thought that it was actually like in the heart, but they had a, you know, a lot of people in ancient times thought that. Now, now we mm, know the brain is yeah. really important in things. Um, so, you know, what's what's in accordance with the kind of creature that we are? Um, That's the question that, that I'm trying to figure out. It's like, yeah, what what is a human and what does a human do? Seems to be the the questions that you ask in order to answer the question how do i live in accordance with nature right yeah and you can add another uh word to it mm. like if you're saying what what is a truly human response to something yeah yeah, yeah. right because a lot and of people potentially what, the, what what is a virtuous human response because like, yeah yeah because virtue cause in the people... ancient sense you was it was essentially like you're good at doing what you're supposed to do right like so a knife is virtuous if it if it cuts well or something like well, yeah, it's like that's that's virtue for a knife, yeah. For a human being, it's more complex. It's, oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it, I mean, it's something that's rooted in in our habits. Mm. Uh, the knife doesn't have the opportunity to develop habits. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't even think that the Stoics would say that an animal has has virtue. Although I, I, I this is a bit of a side note. We could talk about this much more some other time. Mm. I think the Stoics, like most ancient philosophers made too rigid of a, a split between animals and, and human beings mm. and they, they um, you know at least some animals seem to have some of the traits of rationality that we we associate with human beings problem yeah. solving uh, communicating about about uh, um, planning or, or things like that and animals respond to each other in much more flexible ways than just you know sort of a fixed set of instincts that they would, mm. they would yeah. have so but that let, let's put that aside for for the moment mm. uh, as, as an interesting topic to, to explore <laughs> yeah i'm always happy to talk about that in the future because it is yeah. really interesting how how we are learning so much more about the way that animals and even plants communicate and yeah. it's becoming all too difficult to separate ourselves from the biological, you know, makeup of the entire universe or the entire world, you know, as as participants, you know, at, at, alongside animals. 